Hey everybody, uh, at this time we're going to do another campground walk to this time of Julian Price Campground uh, just outside of Blowing Rock, North Carolina. This is the first campground we actually uh, ever started coming to. Uh, bugs are bad. Uh, this is the first campground we ever started coming to after we were married because it's just up the road from the house, just up on the mountain. Uh, haven't been here in several years because we just kind of started going over towards the Smokies when we do our camping, but uh, we are back this weekend, so we're going to do a quick walk through this campground. It's a pretty good size, so when I say quick, I mean as quick as we can, but I'm going to start over the check-in station and then uh, the part of it is on the left side of the road, uh, loop A, and then the other loops are on the right side of the road. So it's actually, uh, the road splits the campground. So uh, we're gonna go through all of it and show you uh, the sites here. Now, the one thing I wanna say about this campground that's a little different than the ones we've done before is that the only certain sites in this campground can be reserved. Some of them are first come, first serve, walk up basis, but there are some that are reservable, mainly the the nicer sites so uh, you want to be aware of that if you want to come here and get a good site you you do want to go online and reserve it you do it at the same place you do any of the Smokies campgrounds uh, recreation.gov and then you put the name of the campground up in the search bar in fact you can book any campground affiliated with the National Park Service even though we're not in a national park here um, it is on the Blue Ridge Parkway so uh, you can any campground in the country that you want to reserve that is under recreation.gov that's that's where you would go to do it so we're going to walk through price campground right now it's actually julian price we call it price uh, but anyway we're going to show you the sites while it's not too crowded right now there's a few campers here it's on friday uh, so i'm going to go ahead and try to show you as many empty sites as i can okay just across the street over here and we're gonna walk up there and i'll show you the posted rules is the registration station okay so here is where you check in uh, there are signs on either side of the road uh, regardless of which way you come from that show you where the uh, you register at so I also want to make you aware this campground does have a lake you can walk around it's an easy two and a half mile hike uh, it's, it's very flat just runs along the, uh, the lake actually right here 2.7 miles it says so there are other trails if you want something a little more challenging. There are other trails you can uh, take from the campground here. Drones prohibited. Okay, so fee to camp a night here is $20. Here are some of the rules and regulations. see that or not it's very small print pretty much everywhere else uh, put your tent on the tent pad only be in your designated campsite to store your food I don't know if you can see that or not have your dogs on a leash things like that of the various trails around here. Right here, the forecast high 74, low 60, 20% chance of showers. So, this is where you start off at. You want to stop and register before you come in. Now, what we're going to do is, since we're already on this side of the road, loops E and F are for travel trailers. Uh, don't know if I'm going to take the time to go up in there today or not. Um, 
this is a lot of campground to walk through right here but i'm going to start not in the a loop because i'd have to cross back over the street i will finish up with the a loop uh, that's actually the one i recommend it's not always easy to get a good spot in the a loop but that's the one i recommend okay so straight ahead we're going to be seeing loops b c and d first then uh since our camp is in the a loop our site we're going to go back over there and i'll do that one last or i'm going to record it last i may for the purpose of this video i may put the clips in a loop ahead of this i don't know yet we'll just see but either way i'll clearly say what it which loop we're in so over here's your dumpsters now they got signs posted on these dumpsters dumpsters here it says bears in the area that did not used to be the case here i'm not saying they haven't always been bears but this campground used to not really have a bear problem apparently that's something that's increased in the last few years because when you go to cades cove they've had bear food storage regulations going on for years and very strict about it because there's a lot of bears over there i've never seen a bear in this campground ever uh, i've seen numerous deer saw one this morning uh, but have not ever seen a bear here, but I'm sure they must exist or they wouldn't say that so So down here when you come to Where you first start entering in the campground, you've got the Trailhead right here for the Tanawa Trail uh, And you can take that anywhere from 0 0.3 miles. It looks like all the way up to 13.2 miles to Beacon Heights um, I know where the Beacon Heights overlook is. I just as soon drive up there so all right so we're going to take a right it's one way you can't go in that way right there i'm going to try not to bounce as much i am walking i don't have a gimbal with me right now um so I'm just going to show you a little bit up here i'll try to stop and get it more uh steady when i get up here to the fork because i want to make you aware of something now some of the sites here in b loop are honestly pretty sad looking i'm not going to lie to you <laughs> they've seen better days this is b1 um would not be my preference nor would b2 um now i want you to notice the signs right here these are not reservable sites the ones that are reservable like b3 i'll show you next have a whole different slogan on them i don't know that honestly you would reserve this one this is one you would get if you just decide on the spur of the moment to come camping and wasn't much available that's what you would take i think we had to be in one of those sites there on the side one time the ones that are reservable have a different little placard on them and they have an r and if somebody has it reserved it's got the yellow tag hanging from it but if you notice that r on the sign any of the sites that have that you can reserve online if they don't you cannot reserve them online so that's b3 and again just really um a basic little site um, and, and honestly many in the B loop are just basic little sites there's a few good ones um, right here's B4 again just not a lot of room there you back in basically unload your stuff and that's it now right here this is what I want to make you aware of we're gonna follow to the right first of all do loops B and C if you go into loop d up that hill that's where the shower houses are they did install shower houses just a few years back they've not always had them so i will show you those uh from the outside at least um but right now first we're going to go to the right here to loops b and c and again there was b4 here's b5 on the left um and honestly i make comments every time i do these as far as this looks like a nice site or an open site or a spacious site or a small cramped site you're going to hear me make a lot of negative comments about some of these sites and i'm not trying to be negative i'm just trying to help you in your booking uh, this is a reservable site b5 you got a parking space here a lot of your spaces only have room for one vehicle so if somebody's meeting you here you may have a problem but you got kind of a little dip right here uh, where you kind of have to walk downhill through a little dip it looks like some water runs through there when it rains to a decent looking site but i just i don't know to me that looks like that would be uh, a little bit of a pain but once you get over into the site it looks okay uh, 
This here is B6, cl sights closed until further notice. I do not know why or what happened, but can't get that one right now. I uh, don't think I'd want it anyway. So we're coming up on B7 and B8. Here's site B7. You got your parking space, you got steps you gotta walk down into, again, a very small site. Uh, a lot of these right here at the beginning of B loop are very small. Uh, there are some better ones on the other side of B loop. B8 right here coming up on the right. Not much to that. The occupants of B9 are here right now. That's who I just had to move out of the road for. So try to do a quick pan over there. B9 a little bit more open. B10, I think this is the one we got years ago when we just decided to come on a Friday night spur of the moment. Uh, never have tried to get it again. B10, uh, not much of a sight. B11. B12, coming up on the left. Looks like more and more people are getting off work and getting here. So here's B12. B14, just another little side up on the hill there. You, you would park basically on the side and that's not very wide. If you've got a big vehicle, you're gonna be sticking out in the road. Uh, you gotta go up those little steps into your side. Here's B13. Uh, not, I don't know. B15, I'm gonna try to find one here in a minute. I can say something really positive about B15. Is occupied, kind of on a slope. Again, just a lot of these at the beginning are small. I'll show you the ones we used to get uh, when we couldn't get an A loop. Here is B16. Not too bad. That one's also closed until further notice. B17. B18, it says they've got a camper pass. Whatever that means. So, again, small little site there. That's B18. Right here is a tiny one. B19. That's reservable, and again, some of these, I don't know why you would reserve them unless you just really want to come, and all the other nice ones are, are taken, but this is your little parking area. Now, if you are pulling a trailer, again, it's not wide. Your vehicle is going to stick out into the road, but if you were pulling a trailer, you could do it with this one. The one we're on, I couldn't have brought my trailer. Um, I couldn't have done it. So, that one you probably could. It's one thing I like about the Cades Cove sites. They have a room for at least two vehicles or a vehicle on a trailer. Not so much here. B20. Yeah. Now, this one here is probably the worst one in the whole campground. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even see a tent pad on that. I don't know if that's one even still in use. But i I'll just be honest with you, if I had to, if that was my only side, I think I'd just head home. Uh, table grill no tent pad I do have the lantern pole there is no number to that one so oh, actually hold on maybe there is uh yeah i passed it it's up under the rhododendron there let's see which one that one is so you'll know probably to avoid it that is b21 it says rv only okay so that would explain why no tent pad rv only We're coming to this little fork in the road where to continue to the right we temporarily exit the B loop and go through the C loop which comes back around right there into the B loop again. The C loop is small. So we're going to do that then we're going to come back into the B loop and then I'll go ahead and tell you something about that site you see straight ahead. That's B22. So we're going to go to the right now to the C loop. Um, this is a gener generator free loop. C loop is generator free and it starts off with C1 small site C2 
Another small sock. C3, right here on the left, is occupied. Decent site there. C4, not a bad site. Uh, I'll show you the one in C loop that I like. Uh, C4. Yeah, again, not huge, but decent. This one here, if you need to be near, this is a handicapped site. Uh, next to the bathrooms. Here is C6. And again, decent site if you want to be near a bathroom. C8 is the one I like in the C loop, and I'll show it to you. You do have to walk downhill a little bit. That's the downside of it. This is C6. Here's C7, which now you have to walk downhill to that one too. All I see is the picnic table. I guess everything else is downhill. Uh, but here's C8. And that one there we've had several times. I'll show it to you from up here. The reason I kind of like that when you do have a grill, you got a good tent pad, picnic table. It's pretty spacious and you got a water pump over there. You got very easy access to water right there. So that was one of the pluses for that one. Let's walk down to it. Um, again, that is C8. It is reservable. If you don't want to be on the lake, this is the one over here I would recommend in the C loop. You do have to walk down these steps. We're going to do now since it's unoccupied and it's a pretty little easy walk if you see that paved path over past that stump uh, that takes you right to the restrooms and actually yes c7 does have a tent pad there it is but there's your restrooms through the trees this is not a bad site right here i've had it several times and this is where you would park for it you do have to walk down the hill so you would want to be careful if it has rained it rained here all day yesterday so uh, you could fall or you could walk around to the steps and go down so C8 would be the premier site in my opinion in the C loop but if you want something that's and you don't mind it being a little smaller and you don't want to have to go downhill let me get out of the way of the motorcycle here's C9 Easy access there. So I guess he's in C11 or 9. Here's C10. Very, that's a pretty nice, easily accessible site. Somebody's outside in it, so I don't want to just hold the camera on it. C11. C13. Looking back over at that one. I don't remember what number I said now. Maybe C9 or C10. Anyway, he was outside cooking his supper, so I didn't want to just stand there recording him. Here's C12. Um, C14. One thing I am trying to learn, uh, I don't walk very smoothly, apparently, and when I'm walking, it's bumpy. But like in some of my other campground videos, I just keep walking. I do want to at least pause and let you see the site without all the shake. So C15 here on the right. Uh, as you can see on this one, the tent pad does collect some water. I think that would be a, a deal killer for me. Plus, there's just not a lot of room to do much there. All right, C16 is right here. You're a little ways from the bathroom, but you do have a paved path right here you can walk to it from. So, moving on. Here's C17. Uh, a little bit of privacy on that one, maybe. Again, these are, these are all just so small. Um, parking space, tent pad, grill, uh, table, no lat. Yeah, there is a lantern post. I'm sorry, between those trees there is a lantern pole. That's one thing I haven't noticed if all of the sites have lantern poles or not. The ones I'm seeing now do. So here, I'm sorry, C18. And well, there it is. 
C19. Maybe I just need to quit giving my opinions and just let you look at them and decide for yourself. Uh, just giving our thoughts. Well, this used to be the campground. We would come here sometimes five and six times a summer uh, when we first started camping. But it's probably been six or seven years since I've camped here now. Here's C20. Not too bad of a site right there. It's not a reservable site. So you just have to get here early and hope it's available. C21. And I guess this is where you would park for C21. Uh, that could be a little bit of a treacherous walk, getting your stuff, especially if you have a lot of stuff. And we have a lot of stuff. So... C-22 here on the left. I see water collected on that tent pad. All right, here is um, C-23. And, you know, that's kind of convenient. Just back straight in and unload your stuff and you're right there on the tent pad. The tent pad's really right up there against the parking lot. Or a parking space. I don't really like that, to be honest with you. Once you set your tent up, if you need to keep getting stuff out of your vehicle or putting stuff up, you kind of got to go around your tent. I don't really like the design of that. Uh, C24. There it is. <clears throat> C25 is a reservable site. Again, notice the difference of the little uh, sign on the site itself. This one is not a bad one. Except, again, the tent pad uh, is right up against the parking space. But you do have a little bit of room over there. And this next one looks like it's roped off again. And then here's C26. Very small. And it looks like... I guess it's C27. Uh, site closed until further notice. A little bit better site though for when it opens again. The tent pad does sit a little bit to the side of the parking area so you could get back and forth to your vehicle. C28 is occupied and it looks like there's not much to that. <clears throat> okay. So we are done, that is the C loop. That's all the C loop. Down here to the right is site B22. Now what I was gonna tell you about that one is that the first, not time, but probably five, six, seven times we camped here, starting back in the mid 1990s when our son Dylan was a baby, maybe even before he was born. That's the site we would get. I do not know why. <laughs> I think maybe we came on a night that that was all that was available. We just got kind of got familiar with it and kept getting it but we have not gotten it again in a long time probably won't because now that the reservation system is in place which by the way you used to could not reserve a site here you had to get here and just pick your site and if they didn't have anything oh well now that they do have reservable sites we just kind of do that instead if we were going to come back here Site B23, which has a pull-off. I guess you could probably get a, a vehicle if you were pulling a small trailer. Uh, probably the sorriest looking picnic table I've ever seen. That is actually still in an operational campsite. I want to believe that just happened yesterday and they haven't seen it yet, but I doubt it. Uh, that, that needs some attention. Uh, grill. No tent pad. I don't, I don't know if that said RV or not. Uh, the other one that didn't have a tent pad said RV only. That one does not say that, so I don't know. Here's B24. <laughs> kind of just down the little side of the hill there. No tent pad. Well, you pull off to the side here. You could get a trailer if you were pulling a trailer. Uh, you got those steps. Which honestly don't look safe to me, especially that last one. And kind of a little drop off in behind it. Right here is another one that's closed off, B25. 
campsite closed until further notice. You're, you're carrying your stuff uphill with this one. Now up here on the right, if you're going to be in the B loop, I don't know if it's the next ones or maybe the one after that. I think it's the ones after that. If you're going to be in the B loop, these are ones we've also had many times and they're, they're spacious. If you're going to come in the B loop, especially if you've got another family coming with you, get them both and that way your neighbors will be people that you came with. And um, there's, there's pretty good space in them and I'll show you which ones they are. It's not the ones where the uh, white vehicle on the camper or it'd be the next ones after that. We've had those before. Those are pretty good sites. But this next one's going to be B26. Somebody coming up behind me. So B26 is right there. That's not a bad site. That's actually, we, we've never had it, but that looks very open. Uh, I think if I was going to stay in B loop and I wasn't coming with another group, that's what I'd want right there. That's probably the best site in the B loop that I've seen. And here are the ones I'm talking about. Uh, before I show you those, let's look at B27. Small site, maybe good for one person. Okay, right here, B28 and B29. These are the ones I'm talking about. Uh, the parking is, is adjacent to each other. I don't, you might could get a trailer in there if you were pulling one. And B29. Right here's the sign for B29. Uh, we'll go back and look at that 28 sign again. It looks like 29 is reservable. I did not notice if this one is. It is not. Well, isn't that a break? Both of those they should make reservable because I'm going to show you why. That one's not. B28 is not. Uh, 29 is. But. Up in there is 28. Actually, I, I, okay, I'm, I'm confused. All right, never mind. 29 is the one we would always get. That's a good sight. 30 is the next one over. That's the one if you have, forget what I said about 28. That's 28 back up in the woods. It's been a while, folks. I'm sorry. But that's 28. You have to walk up into the woods a little bit. Uh, if you want to bring another family with you and you know camp with each other, 29 is good. Good size tent pad table then you got a little path over to b30 which is occupied and you also have the convenience of bathrooms right across the road from you so you got access to water there so yeah it's b29 and b30 and this is also if you want to hike the boone fork trail starts the 4.9 essentially five mile loop right here is pet friendly so you can take your dog on that trip but you got bathrooms here here's b30 that's the other one decent site nice and open so yeah b29 and b30 if you want to bring another family with you to camp and it kind of starts going back downhill again b31 right here Now that has the reservable placard. It looks like the R has been marked out. I don't know if the staff did that or if just some person did that. I don't know. So I, you had to look on the site to see if that was reservable. Uh, B32 right here. Some of these right along here are not too bad. Uh, just kind of simple little sites, but they're kind of you know nice and level. We had a horrendous night of camping up here one night. At, um, B32, our tent, we didn't understand about putting tarps over our tents then, and it rained, and we laid there and got rained on, so 33, can't really do much with that. B34, right here, just kind of pull straight in, uh, you got a very small little stream, no tent pad, down steps. Uh, odd position for the fire pit right at the foot of the steps. And I mean, I've never been called on to design campgrounds, but some of these I think I probably could have had some valuable input. That's just my opinion. Uh, 
Here's B36. That's not a bad little sight there. You got that little stream. Some good space right there. Uh, that one's not too bad. That's B B36. That's B35. I guess you park there and then walk up to the site. B37 here is occupied. Good, good site there. Looks like good spacious site. B37. B38, a little smaller. In fact, that table there is also marked 38, so I don't know what I would, I would not stay in that one there. Um, here's B39. Obviously, you have enough room for a trailer because they've got a camper back then, so if you've got a little small camper, you could put it here on B39. Uh, not a bad little site there. That's pretty good. Good little open space. You do have to go down. You do have to walk down a little bit. Again, that, that could be treacherous. I see some things that could use some attention here. B40. Oh, saw an animal come up behind that tree. I didn't know what it was. Their dog. Little poodle. B40. Okay, he's telling me to move on. Good looking sight though. B40 is a good looking sight. It's a little tough to record in some of these sites when back there, like the guy was just standing by his car right there on the road looking right at me. A little tough to record like that. Because uh, you want to be respectful, but I want to show you as much as I can. B42, pretty easy access to the site, just not much to the site. So if you're okay with a small little site, that might be something to consider there. This is a good spacious site here. Again, you got to walk downhill to it. B41. Steps look in reasonably good shape. Uh, that's not a bad site there. That's a pretty good spacious site. So, trying to be fair here, trying to find some positives. There are some. Uh, so. My battery is getting low. I'm probably going to be switching over to the phone for the rest of this because I forgot to bring my extra batteries and Shaughnessy won't be here till this evening. She is bringing them, but maybe I'll finish this tomorrow once I have my batteries. Here's B43. Uh, not a bad sight right there. That's not bad at all. B44, not a bad sight. Pretty shaded right there. That you get a lot of sun sunlight there, so if you want to be out of the sun, that would be a very good option, I think. B45. Uh, yeah, there it is, B45. And here's B46. This is the last site in the B loop. I don't remember if we've had that one before. It kind of seems familiar, but I don't know. Uh, that's B46. So now we're going to go up into the D loop and look at the uh, that little loop and show you where the shower houses are. And if you think you've seen this sign before, that's because you have. This is where we went to the right a little while ago to loops B and C. We're now going to go to the left and to the D loop. So. Starting on my left side is site D1, not reservable, neither is D2. I'll show you both of them. D1's here on the left. We have actually had this site one time, and I'll tell you why. A uh, buddy of mine lives down in Wilkesboro. Uh, he um, came up early on a Friday to get two sites for us, and he thought it would be funny to stick me on the side of the hill. Okay, I have switched to phone now, as I thought was going to happen. My battery did go on my camera, so... I uh, hope the video quality remains good. My phone's supposed to be in 4K as well. So, uh, But if you notice a drop in quality, that's why I am on my phone now. Uh, like I said, my buddy thought it would be kind of funny to stick me in that little site. So he, I trusted him. Uh, have not trusted him since. And now he's a really good guy, preacher friend of mine. But uh, he likes to do things like that. So D2. Uh, yeah, probably not. So let's walk on up the hill now towards the bathhouses. Okay, D3 is right here. Um, we can find where the site's at. Here it is. Again, steps. Grill, picnic table. No tent pad. Okay, so you're seeing the bathhouses now. 
Uh, again, these are kind of a new addition. In fact, uh, let me walk on up here. The, where the bathhouses sit now, where you see that building, the car pulling in, those used to be two campsites side by side, and we used to get this one right here on the right. There used to be actually a pretty good campsite right here, and it had a water pump here. So we camped in that one many times. It is no more. They cleared it out to put showers in, so. Okay, so here at the shower houses, looks like you have three showers, which is a bathroom and a shower in each one. You've got a sink right here. Now, I know one time somebody wanted me to um, record inside, you know. <laughs> I think they're occupied right now. I'm gonna guess that whoever's in the shower does not want me in there recording, so. We're not going to do that. So, a few more rules and regulations. Again, they're posting about bears being seen in the area. I've never seen a bear up in this part of the state, actually. But obviously, they're here. In the Smokies, you see them a lot. But, never have here. Okay, this one's just the first one on the right after the bathhouses. Looks like a decent site. I don't know what number it is. Maybe six. They didn't really write it on the sign down there, so I don't know. But that one's close to further notice. Looks like a decent site. I think it is six, because up here's seven and eight, so that would make sense. The D-Loop has a few decent sites here. Uh, not all of them are too bad so d7 decent again i just don't like the placement of the tent pads because once your tent's up you're basically if you got big tubs or coolers to carry your you're going around your tent to get to where you need to be d8 right here not too much to this one there's no tent pad d9 here on the left that one looks okay. I believe there is a tent pad up there. A properly placed tent pad nonetheless. So that's good. D9. And that one is reservable. So if you want to be really close to the showers, you might want to give D D9 a look. Or D10, a little smaller, still not bad. D11. That's not bad. Pretty good space right there. D12. Closed until further notice. And does have a tent pad. Otherwise, not much of a site in my opinion. D13. This car just pulled into a site. Now they're pulling back out. Look at what we got here. Look what we got here, folks. A mama and two babies. Well, you don't get that close very often. They just literally just came out of the woods right now. And I'm sure y'all want to see that. Look at that. You know, I like deer until we got one that I've had to run out of our garden about five times this week. I'm getting kind of tired of it. But when I'm not at home in my garden, I like to see deer. I really do. I just don't like the damage they do to my crop. Look at that. Here's D13. A decent little shady side, I guess. Now she's getting a little concerned about me coming. I hope she just moves on and doesn't get aggressive. I'm on the other side of the road. I'm not going to bother her. She doesn't seem too fearful of me, just kind of cautious. There's the babies again. Yeah, that's not something you get to see that close too often. And she just glanced up at me like, okay, you got your video and a move on, pal. So we're going to do that. 
Hope she don't come up behind me and clobber me. I've seen videos of deer. They can get aggressive. Uh, they usually don't, but they can. I've seen one attack a dog one time. In fact, when I told you I've had to run out of my yard in my garden this week, uh, I had let my little Yorkies out to walk the other day, and she's standing right there in the yard just staring at them. And that would not have been a fair fight, so <laughs> kind of went out and grabbed them up real quick and ran her off. D14. Uh, you, you have to kind of carry stuff downhill. Once you get down in it, it's, it's an okay sight, I guess. So I guess she's so, the deer is so accustomed to people. Obviously, she don't want you coming right up to them, but she didn't just run off either. So uh, I'm guessing they get fed some. D15 right there. D16. And again, this is a very small site. Uh, pretty good room to pull into it. But not much to the site. This campground is pretty much dominated by rhododendron. Uh, pretty much every little path you go down I imagine when they bloom, it's very pretty through here. I don't think we've ever actually been when it's blooming. Here is site D17. Uh, I guess, okay, yeah, there it is. You walk down the steps to it. There is a tent pad. Here's D19. Pretty much the same thing. You walk down the steps to your tent pad and to your site. Try to get a look. Okay. Now, here's D18. Yeah, kind of small. D20. Same thing, not really a lot to it. When I say a lot to it, I mean, they all have the same basic things in them, just not as much space or room to kind of Move around. I like a spot site that's a little bit spacious. D21 is a small site, but it looks kind of private down in there. So if you want a little bit of privacy, that might be, if you don't need a lot of room, that might be one to consider. D22, I see the tent through the rhododendrons there. And we're almost done in the D loop as well. So D22 is right here. Yeah. Not not the worst one I've seen. Would not be my first choice, but not the worst one. Back around to the shower houses now, and here's D23. You are close to the bathrooms. I think if I wanted to be close to the showers and the bathrooms, I would go. Looks like there's okay, it looks like there's three more showers on this side. So uh looks like six total shower houses and, and bathrooms right there. So, I don't know how you know if one's occupied or not. So here's D25, and the guy was just kidding around with me. He said to make sure and get that Georgia uh, flag there he's got. So I'm wearing my Tennessee shirt, so we kind of had a little bit of banter there. Because I told him this was going to be our year. The game's in Knoxville, so anyway, he wanted me to get that. So that was 26. Okay. So now we're going to make our way back over to the A loop. Okay, so we have concluded the B, C, and D loops. So we're now going to cross back over the road into the A loop. I am going to leave the A loop as last, I think. I think that is where the best sites are personally. Some And some of them aren't too great, but some of them are pretty nice. So my advice to you... I'll say more about this in the closeout, would be reserve early if you think you want to come here. There are some good sites to be had, but just reserve it early, like pretty much when the reserving 
op window opens up. You can check recreation.gov and it'll tell you when uh, you can start reserving. And I'm going to give you my thoughts and show you the ones I can that are unoccupied. I think you're going to see a little bit more of a crowd over here in the A loop because, again, this is the preferred loop. But um, I'm going to give you my recommendations. And if you want one of those, uh, everybody else seems to like them too because they get going the quickest. So here's A1. Uh, not a lake site. Uh, some of these over here do have a lake view. Uh, A1 is a decent little site, but no lake view. Well, I say no lake view. You can walk out here in the road and see it through the trees, but you know what I mean. And here on the left is A2. I didn't notice if A1 was reservable. I would think most of them over in this loop are. Here's A2, just kind of a little small, basic little site, level enough, easy enough access. Here's site A3. Kind of a decent little site back up in there, kind of uh, in the shade area. A4. I don't really like A4 too much. And this pathway here that you see, it actually is on both sides of the road. This is part of the trail that goes around the lake, which Lord willing, we're gonna be doing tomorrow. Here's A5 down in the little dip there. Here's my truck, A6, this is the site we have for the night. now. I, we came up here, goodness, I don't know what month it was. I think it was before the campground actually opened for the year. And just kind of did uh, a viewing of a couple of the sites here. And kind of decided which one we wanted. This was like my second choice. This is a good spacious site. Uh, I really like the space in this site. I don't like the fact, again, you got to walk downhill to it. <laughs> that's, that's a pain. You got the steps over here. And you got this little area right here. But I like the fact that through that little path back through there is a lake view in fact this is in our uh, my other video but just for the walk through i'm going to walk back there and show you the view we have of the lake as well so from our site you just simply walk back through this little path and you can start to see the lake now there's where i took my nap because i needed to be in the shade it's that's starting to get in the sun a little bit now too it's getting a little bit too bright out here so this is our view of the lake right here got my chair set up you do have that big tree laying over it but that's easy enough to step over so you can fish this lake uh if you got a fishing license if you need one this is price lake again we're going to walk around that tomorrow Here's two more sites if you are coming with with another family or another group that you might want to consider. Uh, you're kind of across from the lake. You can see the lake right out there. This is A7 and A8, respectfully. So those are pretty much two side-by-side -side sites. It'd be a little awkward, I think, if you didn't know the people next to you. I mean, unless you just like to meet new people. Uh, I would do that if we were coming with somebody. In fact, I think we have had those before. Uh, yeah, actually we have the same preacher I was telling you about in the B loop that stuck me on the side of the hill. Um, the time I came up, these are the sites I got. I made sure he had a good level site, same as me, because that's, that's the kind of person I am. So anyway, he thought it would be funny to put me on the side of the hill. So anyway, A8. This here is one of the nicer lake sites right down here. Uh, you don't even have to walk through a path. This is A9. That was actually my first choice right there, A9. Uh, and I think that's pretty much everybody's first choice. That's why I didn't get it, because I didn't get it, uh, the reservation in early enough. This is A10 beside of it. A little bit smaller, still good lake view though, but a lot smaller. Anyway, we made the reservation back in March for this weekend in August, and a6 was my second choice and that's what i ended up getting because a9 was gone already a11 right here small site good lake view a12 
kind of up on the hill there on a slope. Don't really like that one much. A13, kind of small. So that's a pretty good little flat side over there. Looks like there's another one in behind it, another table. Uh, so A14 right here. I'm guessing this is, okay, I don't know. I thought maybe it was the parking for the one across, but it's not. Okay, I see A14 now. It's back up here in the thicket. Yeah, look kind of a little private site, small. So here's A16. I'm guessing A15. 15 and 16, they're together. Pretty decent open sites right there. Here are the bathrooms for the A loop. Only one set of bathrooms. There are no showers on this side. The only showers is back where I just showed you at the top of D loop. A17 right here. No real good lake view even though you're on the lake. You just got the rhododendron thickets blocking it. A18 appears a site we've had before. No, I'm sorry. We had A19 before. Uh, A18. I guess that was A18. There's back in the thicket there. Didn't really see it. Here's A19. I've had this one before. This is a decent, spacious site. It's not. It's a non-reservable site. Uh, but you got plenty. And many a times, if I was going to come up here, I would get up early on a Friday and just come up here and wait for the people to check out and grab it. Um, so there's A19. That should be, in my opinion, a reservable site because you have a great lake view. Uh, you can walk right down to it. You got a lot of space. And that should be a reservable. Here's a handy A20. If you need something like that, again, it's near the bathrooms. And A21 is also handicap access or handicap friendly accessible. Um, not reservable. You know, well, I guess I'm thinking that somebody who's not handicapped wouldn't reserve a handicapped site. But anyway, but you, you kind of wish those would be. Yeah, you got a little squirrel here munching on something. Probably not good quality video. I had to zoom up pretty good, but he's found him a treat. Okay, we're coming up on A22. It looks like they're unloading now. I don't know how much of it I'm going to be able to show you. Just a very small site there with a with a lake view. And right after that's 23, A23. They're pitching camp now. Kind of a good little flat site. Not, not real big, not real small. There's A24. Kind of back in the shade. So I think it's obvious why people prefer the A loop. Uh, mainly for the lake. The lake is something you can walk around. You can actually, I think, rent paddle boats and paddle. I've seen several people out on the lake today. Uh, you can fish. So here's A25 right here. Good wide parking area. And again, you could, you know, pull your trailer in, probably drop it, and then pull your vehicle in beside of it if you wanted to. Got to get out of the way. There's a car coming. But, um, there's A25. Good view of the lake right there. A26. Uh, somewhat of a decent site. You kind of have to walk down to the lake a little bit. Not too far, though. Not bad. There's A27, uh, and that's a reservable site. Again, that's not one I don't think I would reserve. Now right here, I, I said two and a half. The other sign said 2.7. Now it says 2.3. So we're just gonna say it's between two and three miles around the lake. Probably, I probably split it in the middle and said 2.5. That's probably why I did that. I don't remember now. I just always said it was two and a half miles around it. <clears throat> so we're almost done, folks. 
I know these are kind of long. If you're not a camper, they're probably boring, but a lot of people have let us know that they appreciate uh, me doing this. A lot of people have, how it helped them find a site and kind of view the site. They, uh, a lot of people have just let us know that that really helps them because yeah, you know, A28, a lot of grassy area here. That's that's a really wide open site. I mean, there's room right here. You bring a group, man. You could, I guess it's, I'm assuming this is group camping right here. I'm gonna guess. Uh, you man, you could throw a football, a beanbag toss, anything right in there. You play football, uh, pass baseball, whatever. Here's A30. The only thing about these sites, they're right out in the sun. So you would wanna bring a shelter of some sort for shade. There's A29 right there. It's A28 and 29 right there. Plenty of space. A31, not, not so much space, but yeah, well, actually a little bit. A32. Looks like we got some YouTubers. Have to look them up. The Runaway Gang. Follow us on YouTube. All right. I'm not sure who they are, but you know, definitely look them up and find out. A33. A34 is a hand, another handicap site. With plenty of space. Yeah, plenty of space. We are coming up on the end, just a couple more. Here's the back side of the bathrooms, by the way, that I just showed you. And there's the water pump. A little bit of a walk from our site, but it is what it is. A35, another handicap site. And folks, I do believe that is it. That is the last campsite. There is the exit. So I'm gonna go back to the campsite and say a little bit more and close out. Okay, well I hope y'all enjoyed the walkthrough of Julian Price Campground here just outside of Blowing Rock, North Carolina. Um, I walked through all of the sites uh, that I can think of, all the loops I can think of. Um, so anyway, my impressions of this campground are this. Uh, for one thing, it's probably the closest one to our home that we ever camp in. The others are in the Smokies that we go to. A little bit further drive for us than this is. So this is only about 40 minutes from the house. So it's convenient for that reason alone. I can come up here early on a Friday and get set up. And, um, you know, so there's that. I, we've been camping here a long time. It's been a while, but I see some deterioration, uh, to be honest with you, in, in a lot of the sites. Uh, at least they did pave the road. I will say that the road over in the B and C loop is, it was a lot better. A couple years ago, it was full of potholes and ruts. Uh, so at least they did do that. Some of the sites need attention. Some of the tables need attention. Some of the uh, tent pads need attention. Some of them have new tent pads. Um, so my, my impression of this site is if you want to camp in this area, this is a good place to do it. But the best sites for the most part and generally are the ones you can reserve online. So I would say reserve online early. Uh, at the start of the season, pick out what you want. The weekend you can come or whenever it's available. Uh, if you can be flexible with your weekends, you might stand a better chance of getting the one you want. Like I say, I did not get, uh, what was it, A9. That's the next one over for me. We're in A6. Uh, yeah, it's A9. I, we, I didn't get that even back in March because somebody already had it for this weekend. So uh, I, I say I settled for A6, but I actually like it. I actually like it. It's very spacious, and I like the little path back to the river. There's some private, or to the lake, there's some privacy. So I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with the one we got. Um, but just go online early and reserve. Now, I saw a sign up there, and I think I may have shown it to you, it said no refunds. I, I'm assuming that's a walk-up basis because I know if you reserve through uh, uh, recreation.gov, you do you can cancel and get a partial refund. You don't get everything back. There's, you know, there's a processing fee and a transaction fee. That, so they're going to they're charge you something. So you won't get your whole thing back. But I'm assuming if you reserve, you can cancel and get some of your money back. Um, 
I guess that means no refunds on the non-reservable sites. That's how I'm going to take that. So, um, reserve a long ways out. If it rains, uh, if they're calling for rain the week before you come, I guess you're out of luck. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. That's just the nature of the business. Cam uh, thing about campgrounds is if it's going to rain anywhere, it's going to rain on a campground, a ball field, or a picnic area. I used to joke a lot. I used to tell my wife if we hadn't had rain in a couple of weeks, I said, let's plan a camping trip. That'll end it. That'll end the drought. Um, and that, that held true many times, but it, it does rain frequently in this campground. It does rain uh, frequently in the mountains. So bear that in mind. There's always a chance for a storm. There's also a lot of good weather. Today's a nice day. I don't think there's any rain in the forecast today, um, but it rained all day yesterday. So yeah, there's some nice sites. I did my best to show you as many of them as I could. And I hope if you want to camp in this area, you get a good idea of what you want. Go online and try to get it. Uh, if you want to just show up, you can do that. Uh, I don't think you're ever going to find the campground full, but you might get stuck in some of those, what I call less desirable sites. So my impression of this campground is this. It's decent. It's got some very nice sites. It's got some sites that I would not want. Uh, that's just being honest with you. If I was going to camp here, I'd have me a reservation. That's, that's my advice. So... Um, but I'm certainly not telling you not to because there are some beautiful sites. You get something on the lake, you got a nice site. Uh, you got Blowing Rock. The town of Blowing Rock's only about eight miles from here. Uh, Boone's just a little further up the road. Uh, Linville and Grandfather Mountain's just uh, about 10, 15 minutes south of here. Uh, so there's a lot of good mountain activities to do. You're close to a lot of uh, attractions. So that's a plus of camping here. So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, if you like this video, uh, like and subscribe. Find us on Facebook and have a blessed day.